the paintings of Henri Matisse and a live model are the source for the portraits in this art school class. Now I want you to look very closely at the colours he's used. Teacher Shelley France seeks to pass on her enthusiasm for the artist's work to help the children see the technique and intent of the painter. What do you notice about the colours that he uses? For me, the whole secret of, of teaching is being able to motivate, is being able to inspire kids and using that topic of Matisse because it was so bright and colourful and having a model there um, all dressed up in colourful clothes where they could see the lines of the clothes and the colours and by responding to the works of Matisse the children were able to discuss what they felt the artist was trying to communicate and it helped them understand that they could communicate how they felt through their painting. Um, and also, I want you to think about the way you fill up... Artisa's strong use of rhythmic lines and bright, alive colours was his way of expressing how he felt about life. So the children could sense this by the time we discussed it. Um, it certainly helped them understand how they could portray their own feelings visually through their artwork. Right, looking very closely, get the nice... The children lines. begin to chalk in the outline for their own painting. Using the same free broad strokes, they've been encouraged to use in the introductory session when they used a pencil. Nice, loose lines, good girl. I think you need to spend quite a bit of time doing a lot of drawing, but not um, detailed drawing. I like the children to work in quite a gestural manner with lots of um, quick drawings before they start working on a more detailed one. So it helps them with their composition and, and loosens them up. Um, and once they have found a composition that they like, then they can develop that. Okay, out of the way there, then you've got some room. Okay. Now, yeah. you see the lovely, lovely arm goes right out here like this? It's quite big, isn't it, that shape? It comes right through. You need to look at it. The children may have done four or five sketches before they went on to do their pencil drawing. And likewise, a chalk composition may be the end product of several trials and teacher-directed observation. Now, do you want to start with the figure, the person that you've got here? And I want there seems to be a right way of, of teaching how to use paint. Um, and if children are shown the procedures right at the beginning, then it's fairly straightforward for them. Um, it's quite easy for them to make the colours look quite muddy. So if you show them how to use the, use the brush correctly by not pushing the brush through the paint and mixing it all through the bristles, and by using the newspaper again to wipe their brush, they soon learn that they can still keep fairly pure, clean colours. So we go straight in, into the middle, and out. And put it there. In and out. Straight up. All right, maybe we'll make a green. So we go straight in. See? We mix it in together. If I want to lighten up that green, what colour would I add to it? White. Good girl. Now if you think you don't particularly want to put that brush in there, maybe you could put it underneath. Give it a wee wipe, remember I showed you? In there like that. And then we go in again. And it keeps it nice and clean. See how I've changed? Painting with acrylics has opened up all sorts of creative possibilities for children. Because it dries so quickly, they can block in large areas of colour quickly. They can fill in the whole composition, they can see the finished, all the shapes uh, blocked in, and then they can start overpainting. And children love doing that, and they can sort of build up layer upon layer, and if they don't like what they've done, they can, because it dries so quickly, they can work on it again. Maybe you should fill in their whole rug just one colour and then next week when it's dry we can put the patterns on. I'd really like you to look at the background in here and fill it all in. The that? teacher's role here is to encourage children to get paint on paper, to experiment with colour mixing and to be bold. Usually I only give them three primary colours plus black and white because it encourages them to colour mix and, and blend and I'm always amazed at the range of colours that they can mix. 
I really want to encourage them to work in a painterly way, which is a more gestural way, in the sense that there's more freedom in their, their brushwork, rather than dabbing the paint on very quickly. I'm going to just talk about the face, because I notice none of you have started the face yet. Okay? Now, Trilby's got a beautiful face. Each session begins with re-motivation, a sharing of ideas about the subject, about the paintings thus far, and about the work of Matisse. Shelley directs the children's observation to colour, line and form, and to technique. She's concerned to inspire the children and to give them clear direction. This means giving them attainable goals and instilling in them a sense of self-worth that what they're doing is worthwhile and special and unique to them. I've learned never to underestimate what children already know, what they want to know, and what they're capable of producing if they're positively encouraged to believe in themselves and what they're trying to communicate. You can actually see those wonderful shadows on her face there, can't you? You see the light in here? In the dark, maybe you could mix up a darker skin colour and put the shadow under her eye, under her chin. Children receive assistance and ideas from the teacher and from the environment. The goals for the lesson are as clearly displayed here as for any other curriculum area. And children know what to look for in the model and in technique. Down by the nose, just see her nose, there's a shadow around the nose, so you just draw it in. It's like she's done, see? See how she's done it? She's shaped around the nose. Very good. What there? Well, just mix up. See this? Even put, see how there's sort of a shadow under the eye there? You've got to look. Mum, give a hand. That's better. Oh, well done over here. The hands are holding the instrument. Where's her hand there, dear? Ah, it's really important that at the start of a unit of work to give the children attainable goals and objectives. And I usually outline that fairly early in the piece. I mean, throughout the, all the painting sessions, at the end of each lesson, I like the children to wander around the room and look at each other's work and to give their opinions about the work um, and not to feel shy about it. And at the end of the unit, I usually give the children an assessment sheet in which the objectives that I've set out at the beginning of the unit are covered um, and where they're asked what they like about their painting, of things that they have learnt. I usually like to um, encourage them to write about what they have learnt about the artist that we've learnt about what he was trying to communicate through his work, what they remember about it, what they were trying to say in their work, and also ways that they could possibly improve with their next painting. What are some of the areas that they feel that they could improve on? Let's think about what we've seen in this film and ask, what made these painting lessons so successful? The source or topics were well chosen and appropriate to painting. Interesting to look at, stimulating to paint.
the knowing bout was ongoing and integrated into the unit, with the children looking at the work of other artists and discussing their work. Evaluation was ongoing and involved the children all the time. The teachers commented on specific aspects of the paintings. How do we show shadows on the face? What shapes can we see in the bush? Focusing attention. Skills were developed in applying paint, underpainting, overpainting, dry brush, and so on. In the making of the works, organization was important. Plastic sheets on the floor, sponges to wipe brushes on, newspaper pallets, and no water. Composition was discussed. The children started their paintings, drawing with chalk on grey paper, and then underpainted, blocking in the large areas. In the next session, after evaluation, details were painted in, paint over paint, and so on. Problems were faced and decisions made that are too numerous to mention here. But what an art, when an art lesson is thoughtfully planned, the results, as we have seen, are truly remarkable.